You likely already know that a t-test is used to statistically compare the means of two different groups to determine if they're significantly different. But you might not know that there are actually two different types of t-test or even how to use those t-tests. I recently ran a poll on my YouTube channel asking a question seeing if people knew when to use a paired t-test. And a lot of people didn't. And this isn't really surprising because I don't think this is covered in a really applicable way. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you the difference between an independent t-test and a paired t-test, how to know which one to use, how to actually run the test, and finally, how to interpret the results of those tests. So to get started, an independent t-test is meant to compare the means of two groups where the samples are not related to each other. Whereas a paired t-test is meant to compare the means of two groups where the samples are related to each other. Now this thing may seem really simple, but it can actually get a little bit confusing and you might just always run an independent t-test instead of using a paired t-test where it's applicable. Now this is really important because a paired t-test will actually give you more power within your analysis than an independent t-test. And this is because you're directly comparing across one sample instead of comparing the means of one group versus the means of another group. The easiest way to determine if the sample you are running is a good sample for a paired t-test is to use the row test. So the row test is a simple test that I came up with, but basically if you went and you put all of your values in one column um, for one group and all of your values in another column for another group, and then you went and you resorted those two columns independently of each other, did you lose information? For example, if you took measurements before and after a given intervention, and what you would wanna do is you would want to line up the before for a given uh, sample and the after for a given sample. Now, if I resorted the before column separately and the after column separately, and I just ran like randomly resorted them, I would now lose information because the before and after was related to a single person or a single sample. Because I'm now losing information by resorting them, that means that I could use a paired t-test because those two numbers are closely related to each other more than they are to any other number within those columns. On the other hand, if I took two different groups and let's say I took the numbers from one group who said that they exercised and then ones from another group who said that they didn't exercise and I put them both in a column and I resorted each of these, I'm not losing any information because there is no relation to the ones in column A and the ones in column B. So I can resort it as much as I want and that means that those two are independent of each other because I'm not losing information. There's no actual relationship between a number in one column and a number in the other versus a before and after or anything that links those two together. In my case, in one of my articles, we actually did both an independent t-test when we were looking at um, placentas. And so what we did is there's two layers of a placenta and we were measuring the lipid content in each layer, but we had two different experimental types. And so we had two different diets. And so what we did is we compared the concentrations across diet. And when we did that, we used an independent t-test. We did that because there was no relationship between a placenta of one diet and a placenta of a different diet. However, we also compared the difference between the two layers of the placenta. And when we did that, we actually used a paired t-test because those two um, layers belong to the same placenta. So we could compare those more directly. If we did our row test, we would have the sample ID and then we would have have the maternal layer and the labyrinth layer. And if you resorted those, we would lose the information about which belonged to which sample ID. And so that is a way that we knew to use a paired t-test there where we use the independent t-test for, for looking at the difference between the diets. How can you perform a t-test, whether it's an independent t-test or a paired t-test? So there are a lot of different ways you can do this. The most common way that I do it is in R or Python. If you are struggling with how to do this in R or Python, you can actually use AI. And one of the AIs that I tend to use is Julius AI. You can type in, please perform a t-test on these two columns or please perform a paired t-test on these two columns. And you can actually select whether you do this in R or in Python. And so because of that, it will then give you the code to run and then you can take that code and easily go and run it in your own um, development system or your own coding program and make sure that everything is working out right and then use the results of those t-tests. 
Now, other ways you can do it is things like Excel, Google Sheets, or like GraphPad, SPSS, any of those types of graphical interface programs, you can also do it. You likely will have to pay for a lot of those, but if you wanna be able to run multiple at a time, it's a really good idea to um, work with a coding language. You can always use AI, whether it's like ChatGPT or Julius AI, and I will leave a link below to Julius AI if you're interested in that. So finally, we come to how to interpret the results. And this is actually really important to know the difference between how these two results are interpreted. And this comes down to what hypothesis is actually being tested. So with an independent t-test, you are actually testing the hypothesis that the mean of one group is not equal to the mean of another group, or the null hypothesis would be that the mean of one group is equal to the mean of another group. And you get a p-value and it tells you to accept or reject the null hypothesis. What you're accepting or rejecting is that the mean of one and the mean of the other are different or the same. A paired t-test is very different. The actual hypothesis you're testing is that sample one minus sample two is not equal to zero. And so accepting the null hypothesis is saying that it is equal to zero, so there isn't a difference between the mean, and rejecting the null hypothesis is saying that it isn't equal to zero, so there is consistently a difference between the sample one and the sample two. I hope this helps you to figure out what statistical test you should run. And if you're interested in developing out your skills even more, including learning R, I would definitely check out my Research Mastery Academy. This is a place where basically it includes all the different um, trainings that you would need to learn how to perform research from learning a field, finding your idea, doing your data analysis, data collection, writing a research article, giving presentations, and even writing a literature review. I hope this video helps you and I will see you in the next video.